why I'm obsessed with Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson's incredibly amicable breakup before Jack and Eugene, before Harry and Meghan, before William and Kate, mm, slightly after Charles and Diana, there was Prince Andrew and Fergie, Aka Sarah Ferguson, and with the Duke and Duchess of York's youngest daughter, Eugene, said to have her own very royal wedding next week. What better time to chat the relationship timeline of the royal family's most amicable access from their first meeting as children to their 1986 marriage through to those toe pictures reconciliation and their somewhat unusual living arrangements here is everything you need to know let's start at the beginning how did sarah ferguson and prince andrew met the future Duke and Duchess of York first encountered one another as children. Sarah's father, Major Ronald Ferguson, was a major player on the Royal Polo Seine, and the youngsters would play tag with like-minded trends during games. She would rather recall in her autobiography, they then fell out of touch out until 1985 when Princess Diana, yet another royal adjacent old friend, suggested inviting Fergie along to stay at Windsor Castle during Ascot. Though Andrew, the Queen's third child, had previously been linked to a string of models and actresses, none of whom were considered a suitable partner material, his new relationship with Sarah was a turning point. The Queen seemed happy, and so did the press. After a very speedy courtship, the pair announced their engagement in March 1986. Engagement ring details, please. Prince Andrew proposed with a ring from Gerard's, the jewellers who also created Princess Diana's sapphire engagement band, boasting a Burmese ruby surrounded by ten diamonds in a floral pattern on a band of yellow gold. It is rumored to have cost around £25,000. We came to a mutual conclusion that red was probably the best color for Sarah, the prince explained in his engagement interview. That's how we came to the choice of the ruby. The extra bits around the outside, we wanted something that was slightly unconventional. It seems that her mom's ring might have set the standard for Princess Eugene. Her pink orange pad prancher sapphire engagement ring, which also featured a cluster of diamonds, is remarkably similar in color and shape. And when did Andrew and Sarah get married? Just four months later, the Duke and Duchess of York tied the knot at Westminster Abbey on 23rd July. Sarah wore a very 80s gown by British designer Linka Sirich, featuring a number of embroidered motifs including bumblenut bees and thistles from the Ferguson coat of arms and anchors and waves for Andrew's naval career. O oh, and the initials A and S intervined and stitched in silver beads. The scroll collar York Tiara which she wore with a garland of white flowers so Coachella was a custom design from Gerard's and is thought to have been specially commissioned by the Queen and Prince Philip to mark the occasion. And what was the wedding of Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson like? Alas, only the guest at Westminster Abbey ceremony will be able to provide us with proper intel on that count. And given the royal families in a circle have a vested interest in keeping shut them on private matters like this we are unlikely to get the sort of fly on the wall account that we truly deserve what we do have is god bless her fergie's own autobiography in which she gives away some secrets of the big day including the fact that she lost six pounds in the run-up to the wedding due to all the rushing around Plus, there is also the much-discussed footage that shows Fergie's um, apparently winking at her husband-to-be during the honor and obey section of her wedding vows. If she's not already your favorite royal adjacent, she certainly should be now. What about their daughters? The couple welcomed their first child, Princess Beatrice uh, Elizabeth Mary, on August the 8th at London's Portland Hospital. Two years later, Eugene Victoria Helena arrived on 23rd March 1990. Are Prince Andrew and Sarah still married? Shortly after Eugene's birth, 
reports about irreconcilable differences between the couple, including rumors of infidelities, began to spiral. And on 19th March 1992, exactly six years after they announced their engagement, the palace confirmed a separation. The official statement revealed that the Queen found media speculation on the topic especially undesirable during the general election campaign and that she hoped that the media would spare the Duke and Duchess of York and their children any intrusion. This was not to be the case. Months later, Fergie was photographed having her toes sucked. Yes, you read that correctly by Texican financier John Byron while holidaying at St. Tropez. Naturally, the pictures made a front page splash and the Duchess, then still in good terms with her in-laws, was staying at Balmoral when the story broke. The Queen's private secretary is said to have strongly advised Fergie to leave for London immediately, and yet Sarah and Andrew still live together. Correct. Everything that Chris and Guinet know about consciously uncoupling they learned from Sarah and Andrew. Or so we like to think. Despite having been divorced for the best part of two decades, the Yorks still live together at Royal Lodge in Windsor at Stone's Throw from their daughter's wedding avenue. It is thought that Sarah moved back in with her ex in 2008 and has never left. Speaking about the arrangement to radio host Kylie Sandilands a few years ago, she explained, I'm in and out all the time and he's in and out all the time. We're not married. We are very happy the way things are. The couple also share a skiing chalet in Verbia, which uh, incidentally is the resort where Eugene first met her fiance. So things are pretty amicable between the axis. Then our Prince Andrew and Fergie friends were touched by your interest and can happily report that the Duke and Duchess of York are a model divorce couple. Indeed, back in 1999, Sarah described her and the prince as the happiest divorce couple in the world. Definitely a sentiment which their daughter Eugene later echoed when she first called her parents the best divorced couple I know. When Beatrice and Eugene were growing up, they continued to be pictured together at important family events and have attended Royal Ascot together for the past few years. Does Sarah Ferguson still have a royal title? Yes and no. When her divorce was finally uh, done in May 1996, it was confirmed that she would simply lose the from her title, like other divorced peeresses, making her Her Royal Highness Sarah, Duchess of York. Two months later, though, the Queen announced via letters patent that royals by marriage would lose the style of his or her Royal Highness upon their divorce, making Fergie's official title Sarah, Duchess of York. Should she marry someone else, she would lose that title. Will they ever remarry? A sight from the Heart Eye TBT post to Andrew in 80s heartthrob mode, which Fergie posts with alarmingly regularity on Instagram. The Duchess has made clear that she's pretty happy with the way things are. She, she and Andrew wish to remarry, though they would now be free to do so thanks to the birth of Prince Louis. While the Royal Marriages Act of 1772 dictates that the first six in line to the British throne must seek the monarch's consent before marrying, justice. Prince Harry did ahead of his wedding to Meghan Markle. Louis' arrival pushed Prince Andrew into the seventh place, meaning he's now free to marry whoever he pleases. Let's talk about Sarah Ferguson at Prince Harry's wedding. But of course, cast your minds back to 2011 when poor Fergie famously didn't receive a golden ticket to Prince William and Kit Middleton's wedding and took herself off to Thailand to cheer herself up. It's this high-profile snub that made the Duchess' appearance at Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's wedding complete with one inexplicable singular glove this year all the more triumphant though Harry's aunt reportedly didn't receive any invite to the exclusive after party at Frogmore House we don't think that should take the shine off what one Twitter described as the best arrival since male fishing at the christening but where will Fergie sit at Eugene's royal wedding. In May, Sarah arrived at St. George's Chapel alone with her ex-husband Beatrice, Eugene and 
fiance Jack arriving in a group shortly after. While we expect the mother of the bride to arrive either solo or with her other daughter next week, it is thought that Prince Andrew will sit next to his ex-wife after walking Eugene down the aisle, and as they will be in close proximity to the other rows, there's plenty of potential for an awkward family reunion broadcast to millions. Is this finally proof that Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson have rekindled their romance? Prince Andrew and Sarah Fergie Ferguson have been the subject of reconciliation rumors for more than a year now. The Duke and the Duchess of York have always maintained a close relationship, but their relationship has been in the spotlight more ever since their youngest daughter, Princess Eugene, married Jack Brookbank in October 2018. Since that day, the royal couple has been spotted at many other events side by side, leaving their fans to speculate about it, that they're really back together. Now our old watcher has weighed in with what could prove the former couple has rekindled their romance. What Fergie has admitted about being more than friends, Fergie has publicly addressed the reconciliation rumors on multiple occasions. In April 2019, she released a statement through her spokesperson denying that they were back on. The Duke and Duchess remain good friends, as they have been for many years, and nothing has changed, her spokesman said. After they were spotted at Royal Ascot in June 2019, the chatter about the status of their relationship came up again, and Ferguson did admit they're more than friends. We work in unity, and Andrew and I focused on being good parents. We are bigger than friends, she explained. We learn from each other, support each other, and understand it's about communication, compromise, and compassion. What sign could confirm they're back on? Following their role as an outing together, the experts spoke to body language expert Judy James. She weighed in on the Duke and Duchess appearance there and gave fans hope that they could be back on when she spotted a subtle clue in Prince Andrew. From the yellow rose in his lapel matching the color of her dress to the rather relaxed body language displays together that still look heavily suppressed as they, though avoiding any obvious giveaways. Prince Andrew and Sarah look far more current than exes here, James told the publication. Aside from Andrew matching his ex-wife, James also pointed out how much they look to enjoy being in each other's company. They seem to avoid actual eye contact, but proximity doesn't seem to be a problem, and Sarah's raised chin, warm smile, and splayed feet. As she poses besides, Andrew suggests confidence rather than awkwardness. Sarah's smile looks proud and the sometimes sour-looking prince appears to be having fun in her company, James noted. Why they won't get back together? While royal fans are hoping these signs mean that they will be getting back together, that likely won't happen for a few reasons. There have been reports that it's no longer so much Prince Philip, but now Prince Charles, who really can't stand Fergie and doesn't want his brother to remarry her. But why would they care so much about Charles' things? Well, he'll be king one day and reportedly has plans to freeze out most of the royal family and just have the taxpayer dollars support him, his sons and their wives. Andrew is very worried about this and has already gone to the Queen about it, so he isn't trying to re ruffle his brothers feathers too much besides the duke and duchess still live together today and could actually be carrying on a romantic relationship right under everyone's nose all the arrangement they have now is what they want as ferguson has previously said they are the happiest divorced couple in the world